Hey there campers, it is Morgan here coming back at you to talk a bit about molarity and solution concentration today. This will be pages six and seven of the unit four outline for honors. So we're having to deal with liquids. Not all chemicals come as a solid. We buy many as concentrated solutions and we dilute them. Uh, it's just easier to store the more concentrated solution, okay? So we cannot measure the mass of a solution. If you put it on a balance, what you're actually going to get the mass of is the chemical and the water that it's dissolved in. But what we can measure is volume. So since we know how to measure volume, we will use... Okay. So when you have a solution, the solute is what you have less of, the solvent is what you have more of, or the solute is the chemical and the solvent is the water. And when you put them both together, you get the solution. And we're interested in finding out how much solute is present, okay? So if we have a beaker full of sodium chloride, a solution of sodium chloride, what we have present is water, mostly, and some sodium ions and some chloride ions. So if we were going to try to find its mass, what we'd really be finding is the mass of the water, mostly. So you remember density, hopefully. Density equals mass over volume, okay? Now, molarity looks the same. Molarity, capital M, equals the moles of the solute divided by the liters of solution. So it will always be moles per liter. Now the equation that we use for this is capital M equals N over V. But when we say this, if I was you know, going to say I have a 1.00 mole per liter solution, I would actually just write the capital M and I would use the word molar. That is a 1.00 molar solution. We're not talking about one of your teeth here, okay? It is moles divided by liters or the number of moles in one liter. Okay, now often when we are trying to do this, we rearrange the equation. Moles equals molarity times volume or volume equals moles divided by molarity. There's no need for you to go and memorize all three versions of that what's going to happen here is that uh, you know this one you solve for the others using algebra. Okay, so look in here. This is a very helpful version when we're talking about doing a dilution of a more concentrated substance. Okay, and we can use it to develop what we call the dilution formula. So C1V1 equals C2V2. C for concentration, V for volume. Now the way I was taught it, a little bit different, CIVI equals CFVF. I for initial and F for final. So the concentration times the volume of the original equals the concentration times the volume of the final. And what will happen here is that when you're diluting it, the volume's gonna go up, so the concentration's gonna go down. All right, that's page six. We'll jump over to page seven and talk a little bit of how we actually prepare a solution. When you're working in the kitchen, you might realize trying to dissolve something like cornstarch, that if you put the cornstarch in the pan and then add water, it does not dissolve well, it gets all clumpy. The best thing to do is to start with your container having water in it and add the cornstarch in with mixing. It's the same thing when you're preparing a solution. You always start with your container, which is called a volumetric flask, and then you fill it about halfway with water. After it's been filled with the water, you add in your solid with mixing until it's all dissolved. 
and then you continue to add water until it's full. Now, I don't have any of these flasks at home here to show you, so I'd like you actually to go online and find what a volumetric flask looks like. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to do some really just kind of straightforward, simple math problems now involving molarity. In this first one, we're looking for molarity. If we have 2.50 moles of NaCl and enough water to make one liter. So molarity equals moles over volume, which equals 2.50 moles of NaCl over 1.00 liters, and that comes out to be 2.50 molar NaCl. Okay? Now, we pronounce that capital M as molar, and we pay attention to sig figs. 3 divided by 3, my answer is still going to have 3. So, more commonly, we would actually work with a mass and a volume. So we have to do some conversions here. I have 5.61 grams of KOH. To convert it to moles, I go 1 mole of KOH. I added up its molar mass. It's 56.11 grams of KOH. Those cancels, and this equals 0 0.100 moles. KOH. So molarity is moles over liters, which equals 0 0.100 moles of KOH divided by 0 0.500 liters. Now that was the 500 milliliters converted to liters, and actually I need one more zero there for sig fig purposes. And this comes out equaling 0.2. O O molar KOH. Three sig figs divided by four, my answer will have three. All right. Now, working the other way, this is the very common problem. I'm going to tell you this is what you're going to have to do in laboratory situations. So if molarity is moles over volume, and I want to know how many grams of HF are needed to make a liter of a 2.50 molar solution. I find the moles, which is molarity times volume. So I have 2.50. Now this is the best clue I can give you the whole day. Instead of writing the capital M, I wrote moles over liters. So that when I multiply by 1.00 liters, liters cancels. And I get 2.50 moles of HF. Now my 2.50 50 moles of HF can be converted into grams times. I added up the molar mass earlier. It's 20.01 grams of HF for one mole of HF. Moles cancels, and this is 50.0 grams of HF. Okay, there we go. Really pay attention, number three. That's an important one. Okay, so if I have moles and molarity and I want to know volume, molarity equals moles over volume. Volume equals moles over molarity, which equals 2.00 moles of HCl divided by 1.50. Here's the important little trick here, guys write it as mole per liter and you'll see the moles cancel and this is 1.33 liters of HCl. Okay, now we're going to do one of the dilution style problems. HCl concentrates 12.1 molar. How many milliliters are needed to make 250 milliliters of 2.00 molar? C1V1 equals C2V2. Okay, so I'm looking for the volume of this first solution, V1 equals C2, V2 over C1. Now I have 2.00 molar HCl times 250 milliliters divided by the 12.1 molar 
molar cancels molar. And what I end up with is 41.3, and I have to call that 41 for sig figs, milliliters of the HCl. Okay. Now, number six is really a laboratory-based question. So it's an explanation. First off, we need to do the math. If I got 100 milliliters and 0.2 molar KMOH, let's find out how many grams that would be. So molarity equals moles over volume, moles equals molarity times volume, which equals 0.2 OO moles per liter, KM and O4, times 100 milliliters is 0 0.100 liters. Liters cancels liters. This is 0 0.0200 moles, KM and O4, multiplied by its molar mass, which is 158.04 grams. KMNO4 per mole. The moles cancels, and I got 3.16 grams of KMNO4. There's the math part. Now the explain part. One, I need to mass out 3.16 grams KMNO4. Two, I need to get a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, half full of water, and that would be distilled water. Three, add the solid and mix. And then four, fill to the 100 milliliter line and mix. And those are the steps I would actually go through to prepare the solution. Okay, so that's a short little foray through molarity. The lecture we gave in class was uh, quite a bit more detailed, but these are the basics that you will need to know handle it. All right, everybody have yourselves a good day, and I will talk to you again soon. This is Morgan signing off.